Sobrano back here inside Sorgenti Arena. A couple minutes away from the start of the second half between Chestnut Hill and Goldie Beacon. The Griffins on top by one, 37 to 36, thanks to a last second bucket by Demetrius Isaac. And what would be a little bit of an upset, Goldie Beacon picked to finish second in the CACC South. The Griffins picked to finish sixth, and that's Again, even without two of their better players, Edmund Wade and Chris Evans, out. Although they're both standing on the sideline in sweats here today. So Goldie Beacom down Dante Thompson for much of the opening half. He nailed the bench only played seven minutes, picked up three fouls in that time. So he will start the second half and we'll see if the Griffins go right at him right off the bat to try to get him back on the bench. That would probably be the, the prudent plan of action. Cartier Towelford tied for the game high with Mahir Johnson with nine points. Obviously, he has the team high with those nine. Dimitri Sazic, top one, and Laban all, all with seven. Isaac, two of seven from the field, all two of five, made one of two threes, and top one, one for three, but made five of six at the line. The Griffins really the big difference in this one. They're 14 of 15 at the line, and Goldie Beacom only three of four, so that's made up for the fact that the Griffins only shot 37%, and three of nine from deep. Goldie Beacom 45.5%, but only three of 13 from deep, so. The lack of threes for Goldie and the lack of free throws. That's been the difference in this one, even though the Griffins shot sub 40%. So here we go to start the second half. The Griffins in white, their ball to start. It's Wetterlow with it right now, fires it into traffic, stolen by Tate. Griffins go with all, Toplin, Isaac, Powerford, and Wetterlow, the same five. Same five for Goldie in the blue as well. It's Tate with it. Now a three on the way, service too strong on the line drive. Rebound for Isaac. Those two are joined by Thompson, Johnson, and Elliott. Skip pass tipped in, nearly stolen. Talford is able to go back in the backcourt to save it because it was tipped. Talford crosses off the loose for top win, who stuffs it with one hand. Set up by Cartier Talford, who's had a standout game. Elliott nearly stole that pass, but then Talford lost him on a wicked crossover at half court. Here's Tate. Bounded by All, Johnson blows by eyes and puts it up with the right and gets the roll in the lane. Here Johnson, now with the game high 11. Team trade baskets to begin. The second half, Isaac open for a moment. Tries to drive on Tate, spins, picks up his dribble, looking for help, kept the pivot for though. Nice job, All draws the contact and he'll go to the line for a two. Smart play by LeBron All. He felt Johnson on his back. He kind of leaned into him just a little bit, but that's allowed when your man leaves his feet. So All to the line for two. LeBron All now, three of three from the line today. Give him eight points. Go along with three boards and three assists. Second is good as well. Griffins have done a pretty good job taking care of the ball, so they only have turned it over nine times. Only forced five turnovers, but more important thing is to take care of it yourself, and right on cue, Tate turns it over. Talford ahead of the pack, and he was fouled as he went for the stuff with the right hand. We'll go back to the line for two more. Talford feeling frisky today, already has one dunk in a circus layup, too. Game. Griffins can make it a two possession game again if Talford makes just one of two. And he does that right on here. Talford out of Wakawana College, that's a junior college. So he's a junior officially, despite this being his first season with the Griffins. Leads the team in steals, nine entering the game. That's about a steal and a half per game. Second is good as well. Five point game. Talford now has nine. Pass nearly stolen by Talford. He jumped the passing lane on Elliott. Here's Johnson working on Isaac and he drew the contact. 
And the push off, that'll be a foul on Johnson. Two quick ones on him here. That's his third now, that's something to watch. Nice job by Isaac. Tate playing Isaac all the way up court. Tate is a deep extraordinaire, nearly three steals per game. Isaac over the right wing to set up the play. Blows by Tate. Ball jumper too short from 18. Butterwell failed to tip it. As he left up in the air. Here's Johnson, 18 in the wing. Off to the right. Thompson had it, then swept out of his hands by Talaford. Talaford looking to run. Here's Isaac on the wing. Euro stepped inside. A floater. Pretty move by Isaac as he finishes with the right hand. Isaac, the little guy, finishing in traffic. Seven point game. Griffin's feeling it a little bit here. The largest lead was eight. Bob down low for Thompson, tipped and stolen. And Talifor comes out again. It wasn't a bad pass. Thompson just couldn't grab it. Isaac cut off. He's for all. Right back for Isaac on the wing. There's a screen set to his right. A feed for Wetterla. Top one on the block, and he trapped. Never caught that cleanly. And this was in trouble at that point. It was either travel or fall out of bounds. Thompson will sit. He struggled. Been in foul trouble too. Levingston Simon. Seeing his first action of the second half. Chandler Levingston Simon, the son of Cliff Levingston, he was a first round pick and won two titles with the Bulls in the 90s. Here's Elliott, pull up in the lane, partially blocked by Toplin, but kept alive. High service. Johnson will try again. This time he gets the call and will go to the line for two. Fouls on Toplin. Topple now has three blocks in this game. Jacob with a team high seven. Johnson to the line for two. He's tied for the game high with 11. Now he has it at 12. 64% from the line is Johnson. Has scored in double figures three of the last four. He's a, yet another Division I transfer on this team at Delaware State University. Six point game, five point game. Right second free throw, not the tally. 16.38 to go in the second, all. It's tipped. It'll stay with the Griffins. Nice shot by Tate to get a hand in the lane. Otherwise, Isaac would have been wide open for a three on the wing. Isaac will inbound, far side, right in front of the stands. Finds Towerford between the circles as Toplin set up with the screen to his left. All the way out to the timeline to towel for the aggressive defense. Now Hall has a poke out of his hands, and a foul will be called on Johnson. That will be his fourth, so he will have to sit. Bad news for Goldie Beaker because Johnson has a team high 13. So he'll sit. Isaiah Graves. Well traveled, Isaiah Graves. Graves, a senior by way of Morgan State and Southeastern Community College. So he's on his third college already. Graves had that big mishap at the end of the first half. Graves tried to fire up a buzzer beater. Ten on the clock as Letterlo travels. Graves tried to chuck one from half court. About ten or twelve on the game clock. Not realizing the situation and that gave the Griffins the final possession of the first half. He has it now, Graves. Powell Ford on him, service. And Lovington Simon finishes with the baby right hook with the letter on. Lovington Simon now has four. Isaac with Tate on him. Under 16 to play. In the second half, Isaac calls out the play. Has a screen to his left and his right. Goes to his left with the one on top of Letterlo. Now Talford open. Got it. Part the air, Talford, another three. Give him 14 points. That's a game high. He's been hot. Lovingston Simon, now Tate. All on him. Lovingston Simon. 
Out inside with a hesitation move and a foul before the shot. That's on LeBron all. Six point game. Second on all. And the second on the Griffins. Eight to inbound. Initially it was going to be Tate, but they moved the inbound from next to the hoop to the sideline. That'll be Elliott doing the honors. Plays pass to Tate. Thought about the three, the top will close out quickly. Now Tate has it back, deep left wing. Elliott, now Graves, trying to force it inside for service, and he was fouled. And that's on Isaac. Third on the Griffin, second on Isaac. Eight was on the shot clock, now over the back to 20 because of the foul. Here's Graves, deep left wing, and Elliott curling around the screen, goes for Tatum instead, top of the key. Back for Elliott. On towel for Graves, now Tate, shot fake, frees himself up, and was fouled and got the shot to go. Off glass. Tate got Toplin up in the air with the shot fake. Toplin, very long at 6'6", tried to come back from behind and block the shot, couldn't do it. And Tate can the shot and got the foul. Now Thompson will come in. His first action of the second, Toplin will sit because that's his third foul. Tate at the line trying to complete the three-point play. He's been reasonably quiet. Only seven points, three of eight from the field. Now make it eight. Back to one possession game, 48-45. Five minutes and change. Into the second half, it's Isaac working on Tate. He's in the white, only Beacon in the blue. Looking to trap Isaac, holds his pivot foot, throws it back out between the circles for all. 14 on the clock, all works left. On the screen from Thompson, picks up his dribble. Straight on. 18 feet away, no good towel for it. Thompson keeps it alive, it's a crushed 30. For the Griffins, Isaac, left wing, works right with the right hand dribble. Defended well by Tate, 20 on the clock, handoff for all, he has Graves on him, the screen set to his right, doesn't use it, goes left, spins, kicks for towel for it, deep two, off left. Rebound for Tate, and Goldie Beacon. Tough defense there, by Goldie that possession, Griffins do not have an inch. Tate crossing over up top and a foul. Away from the ball. We hold on the ball all. That's his third. Fifth already on the Griffins. So foul trouble beginning to mount just a little bit for Chestnut Hill. For both teams, really. Topland now has three. All has three. And for Goldie. Thompson has sat most of the game, one of their better players, because he picked up three quick fouls, and Johnson's on the bench for four. Up to Simon, his man fell down, it was Isaac, now he gets back to his feet. Five on four momentarily. Livingston back in the game, his first action in the second, and Tate will back out to mid-court and reset with eight on the clock. Works right around the screen, all the way to the hoop, and gets it to go with the right hand. Tate very quick, I know he's not big, only 5'11". Makes it a one-point game. He's heating up a bit, he has five in the second half. Isaac, they come with the trap, passes out of it with Thompson, he threw it away. Thompson wasn't sure where to go. He had towel for cutting down low, and all in the corner, kind of threw it between the two. Now all will sit because of foul trouble and block. Come in, block, over two. Five minutes of action in the first. One point game. Lovers and Simon swatted up from behind by Talford. Lovers and Simon gets it back. Corner for Tate. Back out. Twelve on the clock. He has Isaac on him. Lovers and Simon screwed to his left. He uses it. A floater from the baseline. No good for eight. Clocked the board and he was fouled. The whistle is coming in bunches now. Fifth on Goldie Beacon, first on Lovingston Simon. Lovingston Simon is kind of backed over, incidentally, Flock, who's about seven or eight inches shorter than the six foot six. Lovingston Simon. 
Isaac walking up for it with Tate on him. Tate played all 20 minutes in the opening half. He's on pace to do it again. Hasn't gotten a rest in the second yet either. Now for between the circles, nine on the clock, fires away, book it. Cartier, towel forward, 17 points, three of six from deep and five of nine from the field. He's been red hot. Four point game, Elliott cut off inside, he'll back out. The elbow service, they beat Lovings and Simon, back to the basket, baby hook fade away, no good with the left. Down for a letter low on the Griffin, his eyes are behind the back dribble. He crosses the timeline, hand off towel for the double hand back for Isaac. Drives right by Tate to the hoop, draws the contact, no call, came up short on the layup. On the run, Tate, in the corner, Livingston thought about it. Alford on him, and a hand check foul. On Talford. Smart play by Talford, because Thompson was there too. Talford immediately raised his hand. He doesn't have a foul yet, that's just his first. That would have been Thompson's third, which would have been an issue for the Griffins. The official wasn't quite sure who called on a Talford. It may have influenced his opinion a little bit. Simon sits for Goldie Beacon. Salem in as they go smaller. Livingston catch and shoot in and out as he tried to draw the contact too, and then he fouls. No, the call travel. They'll say Livingston got all ball as he reached in, so it goes back to Goldie Beacon. Livingston will inbound. 51 to go in the second half. Some discrepancy about the shot clock there, but fresh 30, a full 30. For Goldie Beacon. Here's Livingston. Driving right, right by Towel Ford, and he gets it to go. On a double clutch layup in the lane. Two point game. Height pretty much the route. Largest lead was eight. It was in the first half for the Griffins, and they stretched it out to seven. A couple minutes ago in the second, but Holy Beacon has fought back every time. They're swarming aggressive defense. That's Keith Williams in the game now, number 15 in white. He didn't play last game. He had his first action. And then Isaac driving baseline, runs out of room, kicks into the corner, towel for it, back for Isaac, 18 feet away. Got it. Another assist for Towelford. He's done kind of it all in this one. That's his third now. There's Graves. John Williams on top of Livingston. Poked from behind by Towelford, but Isaac lost it at Mattis. We'll go back to Goldie Beacon. Towelford appeared to have forced the turnover. Tate breathing heavily as he's set to inbound. Again, he's played every minute of this game so far. Graves fires away. A deep three nearly got the roll. Just did carry him out, let alone. Rouse the board for the Griffins. Isaac with Tate out on him. 12 on the shot clock. It didn't reset. Jesse Balser's right about that. He was playing. Now Isaac turns it over. Here's Graves looking to push, three on two. Graves all the way and lays it in. Now a timeout on the floor. I think this is an official timeout. And Jesse Balzer is upset. Neither event, two point game, 10.21 to go. In the second half. Now it was a timeout taken by TJ Deckman. Jesse Balser argues with the officials. Isaac turned the ball over. It didn't really seem like the shot clock affected one way or the other. But Jesse not pleased right now. And the officials try to explain what exactly happened. Whether we said or not, I did not see from where I was. But it was a little bit odd that there was 14 on the clock as soon as seemingly Isaac got across the timeline. 
can't be right because you only have 10 seconds to get it across mid-quarter. So there might have been something off there in either event. Two-point game. And Jesse Balser is fired up in that huddle right now. Griffin's on top, 10.21 to go. In the second half. Griffin's 5 of 12 from downtown, 18 of 19 from the line. And that's been really the difference. They're up over 40% now from the field, just under 42%. In fact, the turnover is something to watch. Griffins have turned it over five times already in the second. That's now 14 overall. Isaac with Tate playing him up court. He goes over to the left wing. There's a screen coming from Wetterlo. Isaac. And that'll be a foul on Thompson, who's just checked back in. That'll be his fourth. Thompson's been in foul trouble all game, comes back in. And 30 seconds in, picks up the foul. He's waving to TJ Deckmar. Let me stay in, but he won't win that battle. Lovingston Simon. Come back in. He's getting a little bit of a talking to from TJ Deckmar. Powell for it around the screen to his right. Picks up his dribble, skip pass for Isaac. 14 on the clock. Isaac has a screen set up to his right from Wetterlow. Edged aggressively by Tate and another hand check foul. Obviously, Simon reaching in. It's already to seventh. On Goldie Beacom. So one and one time for the Griffins. Graves will come in. Obviously, Simon will sit. So Goldie going hyper small here. The tallest player is. Six foot two Kyle Elliott, who's a guard. You don't have a forward in the game at all. I beg your pardon. Livingston is actually six four, but he's a guard. As Isaac hits the front end. So let's see if the Griffins can go inside here. But Toplin is on the bench with foul trouble. He's really there. Low an inside threat. Let her low more of a defensive pick, even though he stands at six foot six. Isaac's second rattles out. Livingston comes away with the board. Three point game under 10 to play in the second half. Inside Elliott, and he's fouled before the shot by Keith Williams. That's the eighth on the Griffins. So, 9.47 to go, and both teams shooting already. It's been a, a whistle fest. In the second, Elliott, front end of one and one con, he gets the roll. Back rim up and in. Elliott now. 10 of 11 from the charity drive this year. Both teams having to go deep into their bench here because of the foul trouble as well. Elliott's second too strong. Rebound for Keith Williams. That's one of the guys that's in right now. Partially because of the foul trouble. Doblin has three, all has three. So Flock, who has it now, fires away. And a little bit too strong, rims out. Well, Karam's out of bounds and stays with Griffins. But Flock, the ball all not in foul trouble, probably would not be in right now, at least not at this moment. Powell for the inbound. Two point game. Here's Isaac, driving baseline. And he carried. Tried to stop and go, move, turned it over instead. Walks it up court. Four Golden. Eyes it out on him. Two point game. Livingston. Williams on him. Stutter step. Kicks him in the corner. An open Tate. Too strong. Contested rebound. Waterlow comes away with it. As Tate and Isaac clash together. Here is Isaac. All the way to the hoop. And he lays it in with the right. Blew right by Tate. And a timeout taken by TJ Decklar and Goldie Beacon. Griffin's on top, 56 to 52, 9.03 to go in the second half. Looking for some food and drink after tonight's game? Join us at Brittingham's Pub in Lafayette Hill, the official restaurant of Griffin Nation, where you can enjoy all your pub favorites with your choice of 50 seasonal and craft beers.
Back here inside Sorgenti Arena, Ricky Sobrano, port side with you. 56-54, 52 game rather, four point game. Griffin's on top of Goldie Beaton. And a conference opener for both teams. Chestnut Hill trying to snap three game losing streak. And another whistle right off the inbound. Shot clock issue. Had a couple of those. They get started too early that time. Now they have the right. It's Tate trotting it up court. Under nine to play in the second half. Livingston, Sutter step move inside. High off glass and gets it to go. Freshman Livingston heating up a bit. He's made back-to-back -back shots. Two-point game. It's towel for Game high 17, but he's been quiet the last couple of minutes. Inside for a letter low, too strong on the layup. Soaring for the putback is Keith Williams. His first points off the game. Of the season, in fact. And it's now a four point game. There's Graves. Working on Williams. Drives baseline, rejected by Williams. Williams making his presence felt. Isaac on the run. Looking for Flock the trailer. Got it. Colin Flock, his first points of the ball game, seven point game. Livingston looking to answer, book it. Livingston with seven in short duration as he's heating up too. Great to play, Isaac, which way will this go? It's gonna be on Tate, Tate flopped. Trying to draw the charge, doesn't get it. We'll send Isaac to the line. Service back in, Graves will sit. As Goldie goes slightly bigger. And now their two biggest players are 6'4 and 6'4 in service and Livingston. Isaac at the line for a one and one. Too short. Tate with the board. Tate looking to push. Streaks down the left side in the lane. Coast to coast, anyways, at home. Corey Tate. So with a burst in his legs, even though he's played every minute of the game so far, back to a two-point game. The Griffins led by seven moments ago. Talfor blows by his man, a floater high off glass. And that's a charge. The second on Talfor. Goldie can tie with a bucket here. Let's it roll before he picks it up. Now walks across the timeline, working on Isaac. Sizing him up, crosses over. He lost his dribble there. In the corner for Livingston. Fires away, got it. From the elbow, Livingston has nine points now in the last several minutes. As he's really provided a boost for Goldie Beacon. Johnson in foul trouble, tie game. Isaac nearly slipped, kept his feet somehow as he's working on Tate. 16 on the clock, a lot of dribbling here. There's a little low between the circles. Clock again. Too short this time, he hit his last one. Rebound for Tate. Tate on the run, behind the back, kicks for Livingston. It's right around the screen, back for Tate. Tate and Livingston trying to do it themselves right now, but that's an offensive foul as Tate shoved over Isaac. It's only Tate's second, though. Make your pardon, that's his third. The stat sheet had not updated yet. That's something to watch. Right now, Goldie Beacon can go forward to lose Tate, especially with Thompson on the bench with four. 61 all, 6.34 to go. In the second half, it's been a nail biter throughout. Have led by as many as eight in the first and seven on two occasions in the second. Poplin back in. He sat because of those three fouls, but that's tipped and stolen by Elliott. And he gets the timeout call. Livingston is getting into it with someone, and TJ Deckmark sprinted out. Grabbed his man, his freshman, Marcellus Livingston. Elliott got the timeout call, so it will be Goldie beat the ball. 
off of the steal. Marcellus Livingston has really heated up the last couple of minutes. He has nine. And really the last four or five minutes of play as he's carried the load scoring-wise. I believe he has 12. The stat sheet hasn't updated for the last two buckets. Most of that damage done in the last several minutes is Livingston. It's being inserted kind of as the, the center almost right now because all of the size for Goldie Beacon is on the bench. Thompson has been nailed to the bench with four fouls. They just reinserted service, but he's not really a center at 64. And Livingston Simon is on the bench as well. So Goldie Beacon has gone hyper small. And since then, Livingston has excelled, although it looks like out of the timeout, Livingston Simon will check back in. Traditional look with a center, a big man in the middle. It's Goldie Ball out of the timeout. They go Livingston, Tate, Kelly, Salem, and Livingston, Simon. The Griffins counter with Williams, Toplin, Flock, Powellford, and Isaac. Powellford, a game high 17. And here Johnson on the bench with four fouls as a 13 to lead. Goldie Beacon, followed by Livingston with 12, and Tate with Livingston, it's off for Tate. Talford nearly took it away from Livingston, instead of Livingston. Simon Talford slapped it away, here comes Flock. Livingston's having numbers, Flock a lot of contact. And there's a foul call, let's see if it goes against Tate or Salem. It's on Tate, that's his fourth, but he waves to the bench, leaving the in. Sent Flock to the line. Flock has yet to attempt a free throw in his college career for that matter. Only a freshman. But a shooter, so you figure he's good there. At the line for two, and he misses the first. Service. Back in. Livingston Simon will sit, and here comes Kajir Johnson with the four fouls. So two players in the game right now for Goldie. Tate and Kajir Johnson playing with four fouls. Another on the bench, their second leading scorer, Dante Thompson. He has four fouls as well. Fox second, that's good. That's his first collegiate free throw, and it gives the Griffins a lead, 62-61. He will sit with on all of his three fouls back in the game. A lot of whistles if you're getting the sacks, a lot of foul trouble in this game. Both of these teams like to play aggressive, swarming defense, and that's what happens sometimes. So Livingston, the top one on him, crosses over, kicks back out, service, nearly walked, driving inside. Johnson rejected from behind by Towelford. Balls loose on the deck, coming away with it somehow is Isaac. But he traveled. Thought he might have called timeout, but he gets. He gets called for a travel. I don't quite get that one. Jesse Balser, irate, has taken off the jacket on the side of it. I don't quite know how you can travel if you're on the floor with three guys on top of you. In either event, a turnover. Goldie Beacon Ball. Tate, stutter step all the way to the hoop on a Euro step, and he was fouled. The line for two. That was on all. That's his fourth, and he comes up a bit lame too. Favorite one of those angles. Uh, rolled it slightly. So Tate can give Goldie Beacom the lead if he hits both. Salem will check back in. Tate ties it up. He now is 13. Johnson will sit on a little defense to offense with TJ Deckman. Johnson with four fouls and trying to protect him. So Gray's back in. One and blue. Tate rattles home the second. Salem in. Tate will sit. So again, that's trying to protect Johnson and Tate picking up their fifth fouls and fouling out. Letterlow back in. Williams, who's been solid off the bench, will sit. 
Beacon back on top, 63-62, 5.30 to go. It's been a loss since Voldy has led, I believe, since the first half. Isaac at the logo. Slow it down. Reeves on him. Looking left with the left hand. Let alone will swing it back around for all. All holding. Ten on the clock. Works on Salem. Baseline. He's tripled. And a foul. Livingston, that's his second. Now Tate and Johnson will come back in with those four fouls. And Thompson as well, so the trio of Goldie Beacon players with four fouls will come in after these free throws as all misses the first. Salem Graves and service sit. Get the sense that this game will, without a doubt, come down to free throws the way it's looking right now. Griffins have had the edge there. 20 of 24 at the line. Make it 21 of 25. High ball game, 63 all as we come up on. Five to play in the second half. It's Livingston, top one on him. 20 on the clock. Crosses over, fades away. Way off left that time. It was a bit of a heat check. Rebound for Towel for it. That top one up ahead of the pack. Doesn't go to him, and now he did not get the charge, instead it will be a block. Looked like he might have extended his floor. But that one goes to Griffin's way. And Towel Ford back to the line for two. Griffin's would be wise. Towel Ford has two coming here. It's the first. Griffin's would be wise in every possession here on out. Go at either Tate, Thompson, or Johnson try to get them out of the game. The refs have been pretty liberal with the whistles, so it's not as if they've let them play, per se. Alford gets a pair there. That was a game-high 19, and Griffin's back to a two-point lead. Trying to win their conference opener. It's Goldie Beacon. Elliott cut off baseline. Livingston on the lane. Gets him in the corner for Tate. Tate, 15 on the clock inside. Thompson banks it home off the glass. Day Thompson just his fourth point of the game. He's been on the bench for the majority of the game because of foul trouble. And he ties it up here. 65 all, 15 to go. Isaac on the way. He's going to pass it in the corner. All catch and shoot. Too short. Rebound for Thompson and Goldie Beacon. Tate will trot it up for him. And Livingston deep left wing. 18 on the shot clock. Kelly drives base on cut off by Isaac. Back out Livingston. Livingston tries to drive inside, but he's cut off. 12 on the clock. Picks up his trouble looking for Tate. And he has it for him. 40 feet away on the far side. Five on the clock. Fires a deep three. Rattles out. Thompson keeps it alive. Fires it. It's loose between the circles. Still on the floor. Johnson comes away with it. And a timeout call. DJ Deckmar gets the timeout. It's a full timeout. 65 ball, 331 to go. 332 rather, don't want to short change in that second. To go in the ball game, and it's a tight one. Nail biter, 63 all here at Sorgenti Arena. Located 20 minutes from Center City, Philadelphia, Chestnut Hill College provides a small school experience with many big opportunities. Our close-knit community empowers each student to become a leader in all aspects of campus life. Our faculty and staff help each student achieve the right balance of academics, athletics, student life, and career development. For more information on Chestnut Hill College, schedule a visit at one of our upcoming information sessions or register for our open house. Visit www.chc.edu slash visit. Ricky Sobrano back here with you inside so Genty Arena, 63 all, 65 all right. Official stat sheet had updated it. 332 to go in the ball game. Regulation at least, we could be down for overtime at this point. Griffin's trying to scrap away with a win in their conference opener against Goldie Beacon. Goldie picked to finish second. 
in the CACC sound. Tate for Livingston, down low will post up Thompson, he faces up. On Letterlow inside and he was fouled, shot went go. So Thompson to the line for two. Only has four points, but he's played barely 10 minutes in the entire game because of foul trouble. Now the 6'7 junior from Wakawana College. Junior college, that is, at the line for two. And short on the first. Had to be a teammate. Uh, Waterlow and Talon. Though he is a year older, there had to be an overlap there. Second is too strong. Gets his own miss, though. Goes back up. Too strong. Third try, and finally. Thompson gets the two points. Took a while, but the same result that he got, or would have had, if he hit the two free throws. Puts Goldie Beacon back on top, 67-65. Three to play, in regulation, Isaac on the wing, on the run, literal lays it home, and the foul. Literal aggressive that time. Went to the bucket with his left hand, got a running start off the feed from Isaac. And he tied it up to give the Griffins the lead. Here's the free throw, Johnson back in. Graves will sit. Johnson, Tate, and Thompson all playing with four fouls for Goldie Beak and the Griffins. The bottom all has four, top one has three. And those are the two to watch. Southpaw gets the roll, the hometown roll on the free throw. Puts the Griffins back on top in a game they've led for the majority of the time, 68-67. But by eight in the first, and seven on two occasions in the second, Thompson, a lot of contact there. And Paul Letterlove. Two big guys were banging down low, and Thompson goes to the line for two. It's, it's double bonus time. Goldie Beacon, Jesse Balser, leads his junior forward's case. Thompson hits that one, it's over two on a trip a moment ago. It seems like now that Thompson's in the game, the game plan for Goldie will be to go to him. That's what they've done the last two possessions. Second is up and good as well. Puts Goldie Beacon back on top by one, 69-68. 38 to go, Isaac. The right wing, eight on him, they want to trap as Golden. Isaac dribbles out of it. In the corner, towel for to three. Too short, tipped underneath, and a foul on the rebound. Be on Wetterla, push, that will send. It's like Livingston to the line. Livingston has two to come. One for two in this game. Four for six on the season from the line. Tomlin hits the first two point game. It'll still be a one possession game even if he hits the second. this rebound, even if Livingston misses it. They pull Thompson back and does miss it. That's a free rebound for Toplin and the Griffins. Two point game, 2.22 to go. In regulation, it's Isaac. In the left wing, goes right by Tate. Inside at the bottom of the bucket. Toplin missed the follow, tipped out and rebounded by Johnson. Could have been an easy two right there, but Toplin came up short. Holds deep left wing. Now Livingston. Toplin on him. Under two to play. Livingston right by Toplin. Rejected by Toplin. His fourth block of the game using the long arms to get back. He was all on the run. All. Stops and falls. Dribbles as he's on his backside and calls the timeout. Nice job by all to keep his composure. So as not to traffic. He kept his dribble. He 
even as he fell. And he gets the time now call at the very least to try to salvage the possession. Full time out. We'll keep it here though, 70 to 68. We're finished trail, 145 to go. In regulation, it's been a back and forth game here in the second. The Griffins have led by seven on two occasions in the second, but each time Goldie Beacon has closed the gap rather quickly. And now Goldie is on top despite trailing for the majority of the game. Goldie Beacon has a lead early in the game, and they did a lead at one point in the second as well, but it's been Chestnut Hill in the lead for the majority of it, despite the fact this looks like it'll go down right to the wire, though. And you can bet that free throws will be a major deciding factor. There's been foul trouble on both sides, both teams in the double bonus right now. And several players in this game playing with four fouls. LeBron Hall is, as is Tate Johnson and Thompson. Big trio for the Golden Beacon. His right hand, Thompson making his presence felt. He has six since re-entering the game with four fouls. Goldie Beacom back on top by two under a minute to play. The letter low, holds his pivot foot looking for help. It's a cutting towel for his bullet pass inside. Tipped out of bounds and will stay with the Griffins. 15 to shoot. Shot clock does not reset. The ball tipped out of bounds. Towel forward one. Pops it out to half court for Isaac. He has 14. Tate is on him. Now nine on the clock. Looking right. Get moving. Five on the clock. Isaac inside. Leaves it for a letter low. One on the clock. Thompson has it anyway. So it's a turnover. And about a one and a half second difference between shot clock and game clock. Looks like the Griffins will let it play out. No foul. all does. So they let 14 seconds run off the clock. Paul did not want to pick up his fifth. So he's done. The clock will come in. And that will send Tate to the line. If Tate hits two, Griffins will really have an uphill battle. like Thompson, who we haven't seen much of in the second, will check in. That's for defensive purposes and because he has fouls to give. We'll see what Goldie comes out with. Obviously, he'll be their free throw squad. So I don't 
don't think we'll see Thompson. Tate will obviously be the guy that they want to get the ball. Troy Stansel, you haven't seen all game. I think he might be down for the game. Could be the guy in warm-ups. He's one of their better free throw shooters, 13 of 14, but they don't have the luxury of going to him. Elliott's a good shooter as well, and Lovingston has been solid on the line in this one. So Elliott will inbound. It's Livingston, Tate, Johnson, and Salem in the game. Probably try to get it to Tate. Let's see. Elliott had that swat. It spiked right back into his face. And Jesse Balser is like great because TJ Deckmore he has a point about this. He's been wandering way out of the coaching box. Almost at half court at various points. Now he takes a timeout, another timeout from Goldie Beaker here. That could be a technical foul, which at this point would be huge, obviously, because it's only a two point game, 10.3 to go. Only half a second came off the clock on that swat as they tried to lob it all the way up ahead to Mahir Johnson. It's been a contentious game. A lot of arguing back and forth between the coaches and the officials and just about everybody. A lot of fouls, and generally speaking, when there's a lot of fouls, the coaches aren't happy. And that's been the case. They put four tenths of a second back on the clock, so only two tenths came off on that swat by top. 10.7 to go, 74 72 game. CACC opener for both teams. It's been a back and forth affair. The Griffins have led for the majority of it. Now they trail with 10.7 to go. Same five for Goldie. Griffins had Toplin guarding Elliott on the inbound. It's a size mismatch. Toplin's big at 6'6". They get it in for Livingston. They trap him. Now they're going to have to foul, and they do. 7.8 to go. It'll be on Thompson. Send Livingston to the line. 4-2. Livingston. Coming into this game, it was only three for four from the line. Only a freshman, so not a lot of experience in situations like these, but it is a double bonus, which helps. Letterwell will check in. After the free throw, Livingston hits the first. It's a three-point game. Thompson will sit. And if he hits the second, then Livingston will really put the Griffins in a hole with 7.8 to go. Need a lightning quick two if he hits the second. Here's the second one. And it's good as well. Four point game. Now the Griffins need a very, very quick two. And then they need somebody to miss on the ensuing free throws. First things first, they have to get the two. Jesse Balser will try to set something up for that as he takes a timeout. With 7.8 on the clock. So it's been a back and forth affair. Griffin's trailing by four, backs up against it, so we'll need something big to happen here if they eat out a victory in their conference opener and snap their three-game losing streak. The Griffin's one in five this year. One, one and at home will be in action next Tuesday. That will be against Jefferson, which will be another very, very tough game. Jefferson, formerly Philly U. It's always a powerhouse, and they picked to finish first in the CACC South this year, as is usually the case. So Griffin's ball out of the timeout, 76 to 72, and they trail 7.8 to go. Towel Ford will inbound, and will have to go the length of the court. It's Towel Ford, top of Isaac Dean, and a letter one. And for Isaac on the run. Six on the clock, goes right by Tate to the hoop, and he'll lay it in. Tate did not want to foul, and he'll basically just give up that bucket, making a two-point game. Another timeout taken, and now the Griffins need a really quick foul, and then a missed free throw at some point or another. 3.2, it's not impossible, but certainly not easy. Timeout taken by the Griffins. It's a full timeout. So the odds of getting a steal and a, a bucket in 3.2, not very good. So it was the last time the Griffins tried to trap 
and get a steal. That's probably not going to be the case here. It'll probably just be an immediate, instantaneous foul. And then at that point, have to hope for a miss, otherwise the game is essentially over. Both teams in the double bonus. Elliott will inbound. Topham will guard the inbound. Topham is 6'6 with long arms. Difficult guy to get it over. Elliott looking. Gets it in for Tate and he's fouled immediately. 2.5 on the clock. So Goldie got it to the guy that they wanted. And Tate. 73% from the line. But it's hit a couple clutch ones down the stretch. Their leading scorer at 16 points per game, the junior. Out of Sayreville, New Jersey. First one is always the big one in this situation. There's two to come. And he hits the first three-point game. If he hits the second, that's pretty much game over. If he misses, then the Griffins at least have a desperation to shut with a couple of seconds on the clock. On the way, and he hits it. Four-point game, now barring the foul. And that's pretty much it. In for Isaac. Tries to draw to contact, doesn't get it. Shot actually hit rim from half court, and that'll be how it ends. The Griffins fall 78-74, heartbreaker in their CACC opener. The game they led for large portions of it. Ended up, it'll be interesting to see when we get the statue. Who led for the longest, or how long exactly the Griffins led for. They definitely led for the majority, but at the end of the day, that doesn't really count for much except pride. Goldie Beacom ends up eking out the four-point win. It did largely come down to free throws down the stretch in what was a, a foul fest, particularly in the second half. Just a ton of whistles and foul trouble and free throws ended up playing a, a major role in this game. But Goldie Beacom ends up coming out on top. Goldie Beacom moves to three and four. The Griffins fall to one and six, zero oh and one in a conference for Jesse Balser's squad as they try to tread water until Chris Evans and Ed McWade come back. Fought hard in this one, but end up coming up just a little bit too short. A couple standout performers starting at Talford. Let all scorers, or the statue still hasn't fully updated, but I believe he finished with 19. Has him at 17 here, but he had at least one more bucket since this last update, as he had one of the better games for the Griffins as they fall again. Final score 78 to 74. They'll be back in action on Tuesday against Jefferson University. That will be at Jefferson University. So we'll not be back on for that one. Our next men's game, I believe, will be the 19th. So 17 days from now. And that will be maybe who it's against right now. That will be against Holy Family. Next three after this are on the road for the Griffin men. So until then, I'm Ricky Sobrano. Again, the final score for the final time, 78-74. The Griffins fall in their CACC opener to Goldie Beacon.